Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today I'm looking at the RTX 3050, but not just any RTX 3050. The card I'm actually most interested in uh, talking about today is this single fan variant of the RTX 3050. This particular one is an ASUS model. However, there are some other single fan units out on the market, depending on where in the world you are, you may have access to some and not others. For instance, I know over in Europe, you're gonna probably have access to the pallet version, but uh, over here in the United States, you don't really see pallet cards pretty much ever, at least unless you're going with that secondhand market. But regardless, I wanna talk a little bit about this guy because it's a really interesting card. Let's get into it. Now, unfortunately, if you're watching this video when it first comes out, you'll probably notice that these cards are still very hard to come by. Obviously, hopefully in the future, something like an RTX 3050 is very easy to find at near MSRP, but that's not the case right now. So I will link it in the description down below in case you're interested in checking current availability. But at least for the moment around launch, the easiest way to give yourself at least a chance of getting one at MSRP, unfortunately, is to go through the Newegg shuffle system, where even after launch day, they've had a couple of MSRP variants that have been available. I don't know how many of them they have at any given time. It's pretty much impossible to say. So uh, your luck may vary on that front. Now I wanna spend the rest of the video basically commending ASUS for their particular take on the RTX 3050. This one was one of the MSRP uh, priced cards on launch day. I was able to get it through a new egg shuffle. So I paid after tax shipping all that. I think it was $277 on the dot for my particular card. And I was a little bit apprehensive. I actually wanted to get a dual fan variant, but to give myself the best chance to get one at the MSRP, I just uh, checked off all of the MSRP priced ones. And this is the particular one that I actually was able to purchase. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of glad I did. So anytime I purchase a card like this, that seems to be somewhat geared towards an ITX build, which by the way, take a brief aside here, this is an excellent card for almost any ITX build, unless you're extremely restricted on the sizing. The first thing that ASUS did correct here is the bracket itself where you actually screw in the card to the case is only two slots wide, even though the actual cooler is more like two and a half slots. And the reason that's a big deal is because a lot of ITX cases only have two slots available, even if they have a little bit more extra room around the GPU, something like a Node 202, which is my go-to ITX sort of a console replacement PC that I can put with an entertainment center. Uh, yeah, it only has two slots, but it does have a little bit of extra room around the GPU. So a card like this is gonna fit perfectly in there. The other really intelligent decision I think ASUS made when they designed this card with one fan in mind is once again, the cooler is two and a half slots wide. The actual aluminum heat sink is quite chunky and it does have three heat pipes with direct contact to the GPU, as well as having the memory modules cooled with heat pads contacting the uh, cold plate. So this is a well-designed cooler, at least at face value, it's a well-designed cooler with good decisions being made by ASUS to actually make this a really smart ITX solution. However, testing is obviously required for a card like this. So I wanted to take a look most specifically at two things when I was testing this card, noise levels, and of course, actual GPU temperature. And fortunately, this is a bit of a spoiler alert, both of those ended up to be no problem at all. Let's take a look at the GPU temperature first with a half an hour run in Heaven Benchmark. This is what we came up with. So yes, I do fully understand this is an open test bench that this card is sitting on, but we're seeing an absolute maximum throughout the entire 30 minute run where this GPU was pretty much pegged the entire way the temperatures were only reaching up into the very low 60s, which is absolutely fantastic. Even putting it into most ITX builds, yes, those temperatures will be a little bit higher depending on the airflow of the case, but this gives us a ton of headroom to have a card that's performing quite well. And with the case that I plan on putting this card in the Node 202, there's actually ventilation right by the air intake fan for this GPU. So it actually has pretty good access, at least in that case, 
to fresh air. So temperatures shouldn't go up by a whole lot. Now, the second concern, of course, is always noise with a card, especially with one fan only, because if you recall back to the GTX 1060 three gig days, those single fan cards would get insanely loud. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of a sound test of the RTX 3050 at full load. And here's what that sounds like. So this is a sample of me talking in this room so you can kind of get a sense of the noise floor and where the overall level is here. So now I'm going to put the lav mic right up against this, uh, this 3050 so you can kind of see how quiet the single fan version is. Now I'm standing about two feet away from the mic where I'm holding it right now. So again, you can kind of get a feel for just how quiet this card really is. So if you're looking for an ITX GPU here in 2022 and you find the availability of a single fan RTX 3050, especially if it's this particular ASUS model, then don't shy away from purchasing one of those, especially if you're looking for something with very tight space constraints, then a card like this makes a ton of sense. And fortunately, not only does it stay cool, but it also does not get overly loud. Now, if you have a larger chassis, usually my recommendation right now is just gonna be basically pick what's available and don't disqualify this particular card from a chassis, even if you have plenty of room for a standard dual fan model. That being said, if you do happen to find yourself with the choice of either a single or a dual fan model, then probably go ahead and get the dual fan model just because you're gonna get even better cooling. It's gonna be even quieter than a single fan card, even though this one was by no means loud. If you have the choice and the space, the dual fan model is probably the way to go. But as is often the case in 2022, you probably don't have the choice between multiple cards. So uh, just what I'm getting at is here, don't disqualify this model because it only has a single fan. It actually does quite well. Now, if you're interested in actual performance benchmarks of the RTX 3050, I'm gonna go ahead and link a review or two down below in the description to give you a better idea of just how well a card like this will perform in gaming. Uh, but the big takeaway here is this card is not gonna be limited uh, or limiting the GPU itself in any way based on temperatures or that sort of thing. It's just fine. So it's gonna perform exactly like pretty much every other RTX 3050 out there. Otherwise, those of you that were able to get your hands on an RTX 3050, let me know how that's going for you. Let us know what card you were able to get a hold of. Just let me know all your thoughts on the 3050 in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.